The objective in this lesson is to learn how to solve radical equations. What you have in front of you right now is a radical equation. This symbol here is called a radical. If there was a number here, that would be called the index of the radical. And whatever is inside the radical is called the radicand. So this is the radical, this is the index of the radical, and this here is the radicand. To solve radical expressions or equations, uh, the first step is to isolate the radical. We want to get it by itself on one side of the equal sign. And the way we do that is by transposing terms. To get this radical by itself, I've got to get rid of this 5. And since it's a positive 5, I know it's positive because there's no sign in front of it. I'm going to do the inverse operation, and I'm going to subtract 5 from this side of the equation. But what I do to one side, I have to do to the other, so I'm going to subtract 5 from this side of the equation. 5 minus 5 is 0, so I'm left now with just the x on one side of the equation. 8 minus 5 is 3, so radical x equals 3. The next step is that I want to get rid of the radical because I want to solve for x. I don't want to know what the, what the radical x is. The radical x is 3. I want to know what x is. So what I do is I square both sides to get rid of the radical. Why? Well, if I square both sides, what happens is that this square gets applied to the x inside the radical or the radicand and uh, 3 squared becomes 9 okay the square root of x squared is x so x equals 9 that's my answer to get rid of the radical I square both sides that square is applied to the radicand that gives me x squared and the square root of x squared is x and that's how I get my answer. So the first step in solving a radical equation is to isolate the radical so if there are any numbers next to the radical I want to get rid of them I did that I got rid of the 5 after I isolate the radical I square both sides of the equation that allows me to get x squared. Then I can find the square root of x squared, which is x, and that leaves me with my answer, x equals 9. So let's solve some of these problems. Um, since I don't have any, since that radical is already isolated, all I've got to do here to solve my equation is square both sides. That'll leave me, that'll give me 3 squared x squared equals 9 times 9, which is 81. The 3 squared becomes 9. The x squared stays x squared. Now, what's the square root of 9? 3. What's the square root of x squared? x equals 81. I don't find the square root of 81 because there's no radical. See, the radical tells me that I have to find the square root of the radicand. That is, I have to find the square root of any number inside the radical. So now that I have 3x equals 81, I want to get x by itself. So I use the inverse operation. Since this is 3 times x, I'm going to use the opposite operation of multiplication, or the inverse operation, which is division. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. And 1 times x is x. But what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So I'm going to divide this side by 3 as well. That gives me 27. 81 divided by 3 equals 27. And my answer is x equals 27. This equation, unlike the other one, does have a number next to the radical. So in this one, I, ha in this one, I have to isolate the radical. In other words, I've got to get rid of the negative 4. Since it's a negative 4, I'm going to use a positive 4 to get rid of it or transpose it. 
Since I added 4 to this side, I have to add 4 to this side to keep the equation equal. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. So now I've got my radical by itself. I've isolated it. And 11 plus 4 is 15. The next step is that I square both sides. Once I've isolated my radical, I square both sides. Um, that is going to leave me with 5 squared x squared equals 15 squared. And 15 squared is 225. Now I'm going to find the square of 5. 5 times 5 is 25. Equals 225. Now I can find the square root to 25, which is 5. The square root is the number that when I multiply times itself gives me 25. So the number that when I multiply times itself that gives me 25 is 5 times 5. So that's why the square root of 25 is 5. The square root of x squared is the, is the variable that when I multiply it times itself twice gives me x squared. So the variable that when I multiply it times itself gives me x squared is x. So that's why x is the square root of x squared. So 5x equals 225. I want to get x by itself so I can know what x equals. Um, so I want to get rid of the 5, and this means 5 times x. So I'm going to use the inverse operation, which is division. The inverse of multiplication is division, so I'm going to divide by 5. That gives me 1, and 1 times x is x. I'm going to divide this side by 5. And 225 divided by 5 equals 45 x equals 45. That's my answer. Oh no! Fractions! Yes, fractions. Okay, they shouldn't scare you. Um, fractions are just numbers, so don't panic, please. Alright, remember the first step is to isolate the radical. Well, in this equation, the radical is already isolated. It's already by itself on one side of the equal sign or on one side of the equation and the next step after I isolate the radical is to square both sides so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to square both sides um, that's going to give me 2 squared x squared over 5 squared 4 times 4 is 16. Two squared is 4. Right? 2 squared. 2 times 2 is 4. X squared is X squared. And 5 squared is 25. Equals 16. It's very simple. I've got to find the, four, the square root of 4 and the square root of x squared and the square root of 25. Well, the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of x squared is x. What's the square root of 25? What's the number that when you multiply it times itself gives you 25? The number is 5. Equals 16. 